So to start off on staves, staves, runes, wards, all of that, a lot of them are wards. Some of them are used to empower oneself. Some represent the gods. Most of them are to be carved on very specific things, different types of wood, different types of metal, and a lot of them actually end up using blood. When blood is used, it's to be very particular from a particular hand, from a particular finger, foot, even under the root of your tongue. This one is the Aegis Yaldar, the helm of all. It's to be carved or painted on metal or wood and placed on one's brow on a helmet. It's meant to instill fear and terror inside one's enemies when you're fighting. Does anybody have any ideas why blood or a specific type of wood would be used? Not Magic. Even. <laughs> Somewhat. Uh, Gods are picky. Possible. Blood is particularly used because it signifies a sacrifice. You are giving something to empower these sigils, to make them work. It's not as simple as just drawing something on a piece of paper and leaving it there to work. You have to actually give something. You have to give a little bit of pain. Uh, particular woods are used because of the things they symbolize. Uh, some things use oak to symbolize Thor. Some use elm to signify Embla or women. And others use things you know, like ash for men, stone, metal for strength, endurance, foundation. These ones here are staves against attacks from spirits. They're to be carved on oak, protection of Thor, and anointed with blood from the little finger of your right hand. But again, the blood is giving something. Uh, then once you carve these on wood and anoint it with your blood, you hang it above the doorway of your home and malicious spirits do not enter. Okay, so this one is actually very particular and this one is interesting to me in that my new calendar system that I'm working on is very useful for it. This one is called a dream stay. It's to be carved on lignite, which is a type of wood, with the horn of a dogfish, a fishbone, under the moon of three nights. So what that means is, when the moon is new, that's the, in my calendar at least, that is not a night. It is the zero day of the month. The night after that is the first night, then the second night, then the third night. That's how the days are marked in my new calendar. So, as per the heathen calendar, on the third day, that night, you would carve this room. Then you place it under your head, or under your pillow, and you'll dream whatever you wish. Enemies. It's not too Where does really one obtain a dogfish? It's just a fish bone. Where it, a dogfish is, from what I understand, a type of fish. Right. Uh, so it's just a type of fish that would have been it, Yeah, that, it's a type of fish. In that, um, uh, I'm not sure ecosystem. how... Yeah. I'm not sure how soft lignite is, but I assume you would use like a rib of it, or like a spine, it. and sharpen it, yeah. Alan, they don't broke, actually have horns. You broke the fourth wall during the video. I always break the fourth wall during the video. <laughs> You're just letting you know. What is this, acting? Okay, but, uh, before I draw these, some runes or staves actually represent the gods. They can be used to devote things to the gods, to call favor of a particular god, or to dedicate a holiday to a god. Uh, Litha would actually be a good one for Freyr, as he is the male god of fertility. Okay, so, runes that represent gods, or sigils that represent gods. We have Freyr, and then we have these three, Fjolnir, Fenger, and Thumdir. Those are names of Odin. So if you're looking to call these gods, maybe uh, scribe a certain amulet to these gods, these would be applicable runes to use. Yes? I wasn't sure. Um... The names of Odin, do they have specific meanings or aspects that they... Not that I know of. We may add that later as an excerpt. Kind of hey, you did make it. That. So, these two, they don't indicate a specific deity. They don't indicate, you know, really much of anything. They're not wards or anything. They're used more as insults or compliments towards someone. This is Thrumur, a slow person. So, if somebody's, you know, slow at work or, you know, they're not really picking up on the job or they're not cooperating with you, you would maybe carve that on their doorstep or paint that on their doorstep to just say, hey, you're an idiot. Or if you really like somebody, maybe give them a gift with Thekur on them, which sounds a little odd, but it's a likable person. 
So are, are, is there like a substance to carve them into, or is there just no, these one, because they're just... All of these ones, all of the ones for people or deities, they don't have a specific way that they need to be done. It's just kind of anything. Uh, no sacrifices needed. It it's, makes sense. Because it's basically are... like writing a deity. Everyday use. Something. Yeah, everyday use. The next one, however, is so specific, <laughs> and it's actually an object that you create. It's not painted or carved, you forge it. That you can't do with someone else here. Are there but, goddess deities also represented by a runic symbol, or because you only you did the um, the ones you did were all the male deities? So I'm just wondering, or was it not that I've encountered? Interesting. But I am sure that they do exist. Yeah, maybe they um, were carved into substances that degraded or something. And that, that's possible. Um, I know Friga is usually depicted with a spinning wheel, so maybe uh, Nate spoke to Filfot. If you're not using it as a Kolvarat, it would possibly be a, a designation to Friga. And these are all, the origin is Icelandic? Yes. Couldn't, the, um, couldn't these be used like in other Nordic countries? Yeah, like, I mean, Iceland is the Norwegian origin. Norwegian, Sweden. But, uh, <clears throat> Iceland is a part of, uh, Iceland is the origin of all these, but Iceland um, is a part of Scandinavia. Yes. Which is actually interesting enough means Skathi's land. So she's the uh, giantess goddess of winter, uh, skiing, hunting, and so, so all of Scandinavia <laughs> is her land. And it's, it's difficult to really determine it with current national lines because some of Scandinavian countries actually extend down into where uh, Germany. Germany is. Yeah. Um, Sigurd's Block, for instance, uh, honors the hero Sigurd who killed the dragon Fafnir yes. and reclaimed the treasure of the Rhine River, which is in famous Germany. in Germany. Modern day Germany. Modern day Germany. Would parts of Russia or Poland also be considered? Russia was actually founded by four Viking lords. Uh, so huh. Russia could be considered a Nordic inspired country. It's decidedly Slavic. Um, but There's like an intermingling all, of the two. Yeah, right? it all came from primordial roots, uh, but the two cultures are very intertwined. That's actually why I personally believe that Thor and Perun are the same deity, just different names for them. Similar to how Thor is called uh, Donar in Germany. So, this one is the Thor's hammer. It is meant to be an object. It was born out of a time of great conflict during the Christianization of Iceland. To make this, one must steal copper from a church bell between the epistle and the gospel during mass on Pentecost, also known as Whit Sunday. Then once you have the hammer forged from your illicitly gotten copper, it's to be hardened, which means you have a small bowl, usually of water, which you place the metal in to quench it, harden it, but this is to be hardened in human blood. It can be from yourself, obviously you don't need to give enough to kill yourself, but you have to fill a small bowl and harden this. It's not meant to be this big, maybe about the size of your hand, but uh, as it's made of copper, these are actually hammer heads, and it has a function. If you have an object that is stolen from you, and you want to know who has stolen it, or you want to harm them, you draw a human head on a piece of paper in your own blood, or at least the eye. On the other side of the paper, you draw either of these sigils. These are sigils to find a thief. Then you place a steel rod over the eye of the drawing and hit it with the Thor's hammer. You can say, you know, I make pain in his eye or I put out his eye. You don't really need to recite anything. You just hit it. It's kind of a voodoo doll type function. Well, wait, so after, after you, like, <laughs> voodoo the person you don't know, how do you know that... How do you find out to get your stuff back? Oh, you or is just it just is it just harming them? them? Like you, you know, worried about your stuff, you're just worried about revenge. You look for whoever has their eye put out. <laughs> <laughs> you look for whoever's wearing an eye patch the next day. <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of a, a form of superstition. This one is a little bit more galder or magic. Um, it takes a little bit more superstitious faith, uh, but that is the function of the Thor hammer. Yeah. We really got two left here. These ones are odd for this particular group. These ones are staves to protect against Galdr, or witchcraft. A little ironic, as some people here are witches, uh, these are just to be carved on poles, amulets to wear around your neck. They protect against malicious intent, specifically witchcraft. 
Yes. Would it protect you against the Thor's hammer? <laughs> the Thor's hammer, I don't believe, is technically Galdar. Hmm. It's invoking Thor. So this, this would this not would protect be, against Thor's hammer. This would protect against other pantheons and Christianity magic. Yeah. What well, book I mean, is the Blood of Christ, right? The book that I got this from? Yeah. Uh, Rune book. It's one that I got from Iceland. Uh, so I had to look in the back where they have it translated to English. It's kind of <laughs> helpful. I got one last one, which is very applicable for tonight. Okay. So, this is the last one. Very good for tonight. This is the Vegvasir. It's to be carved on oak, symbolic of Thor, and it guides one safely through rough weather. There's nothing particular about this that uh, you know acts on any person. It's just meant to more invoke Thor, invoke many various inclement weather conditions, and to see one safely through it. There's no guarantee that it works. It's more of a petition to Thor. So this one is a very good one for tonight. And this is how we'll end this presentation as it's pouring outside and we have a flood warning. Everyone drive home safe. Don't go too fast. Watch for deep puddles and all that nice jazz. Don't, don't uh, skate across the water. <laughs> there we have it.